us off with a brief introduction of like who you are and what you do. Um, so my name is R.C. Sabir. I'm a residential life coordinator here at Stetson University. Um, I've been here for about three years now, and my role on campus is to mainly um, support community um, inside the residence halls. So each RLC operates about four to five residence halls. Each are consisting between 100 to 300 students, depending on the building. Um, we each supervise around 16 to 17 resident assistants who are student leaders that are charged with creating community, upholding policy, as well as um, making sure that students are having a safe and exciting experience here at Stetson. Beyond supervision of those students, we also serve on a variety of committees, both within our department as well as outside for the university. I myself work with the strategic map of the university, um, specifically with inclusivity on campus. I also serve um, within the Division of Campus Life and Student Success as the chair of the Graduate um, Student Experience Committee. And then I also work with things such as Safe Zone, um, which is all LGBT education. I also s serve um, as a conduct um, officer, so I deal with conduct on campus, as well as serving in the crisis uh, management team, which is a team of about 12 of us that are consistently rotating being on call for the university in case an emergency occurs. Um, and then responding and following up with any emergencies that happen throughout campus. That would be the majority of what I do on this campus. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. So, you mentioned that you were part of like the crisis management team. Um, have you had any crisis to deal with for this year? Sure. So this year, I have been pretty um, lucky. Um, I haven't had too many. We, of course, have our fair share of alcohol incidents, especially in our first usually within the first few weeks, students um, either with little experience with alcohol or with new freedoms choose to engage in high-risk behavior um, as they do at almost every campus. And we absolutely respond to those. I've had students that were heavily intoxicated that have been evac to the hospital. And usually what that looks like is when we respond on scene, we're kind of just taking notes, making sure everyone's getting taken care of, getting to the hospital, and then doing any follow-up that's necessary. So if a student's under 21, um, under 18, or is incapacitated, we need to contact their emergency contact and let them know. Um, so our chain of command does that while we're making sure that we're taking care of anyone that was either witness to this and was really upset by it. Um, and then we also, within the next few days, um, well, hours, and then the next few days, we'll follow up with that student to make sure they're, they're doing okay and that they return to campus and have what they need um, in order to be successful here. Do parents get notified in that kind of situation, or does it depend on the So students? it depends. If the student is able to speak with us and is coherent, so sometimes if they're just injured, um, we want them to make that contact so we know that the parent's aware. Um, however, if a student is under 18 or if a student um, is not able to communicate, um, we do make that call for them. In conduct issues, though, we try to leave the parents out as best as possible. We really try to treat each student as an adult. Um, if it is their second or third offense and we believe that the parent, will, the parent being involved will assist with the matter, um, then we might bring them into it. But sometimes, you know, a student is either estranged or just not, doesn't have that relationship. So um, we'll kind of feel it out based on the conversation with the student, whether or not that will be helpful to them. Um, we certainly don't ever want it to be a, a detrimental part of them moving forward and learning from the experience. What exactly does the conduct board do? Sure. So anytime a student violates policy, there's a few different options. Um, and I think this is something that students don't always realize. The student conduct board is just like meeting with me. So when they, when they violate a policy, um, sometimes students think like, oh, it's conduct board, then one of the professional staff members, then Rosalie. Not really how it works. Um, student conduct board and the RLCs, um, some of the other members of Campus Life, we're all on the same level. Conduct board will really get those situations that we haven't really had often. So we try to give them the opportunity to kind of set precedents so that the precedents come from peers. Um, conduct board will deal with a lot of our fire safety violations. They'll deal with all of some low-level alcohol incidents, whereas pro staff will sometimes will get those as well. Um, but a lot of what we're dealing with is some higher up issues at times. So your know, drugs, alcohol, repeat offenders. Those first level main incidents can be heard by almost anyone. So sometimes I think the perception is that, you know, if you're meeting with me, it means that you're likely to get in more trouble. That's not true. We like to have people go through conduct board for precedence. But I hear cases that conduct board hears as well. And the conduct board is made up of multiple students on campus. They hear the case, they're advised by an RLC, and then together the students create the, the sanctions if the student's found responsible. 